Very exciting sprinting. We just finished off the uh, men's point space. And now we're going into the final of the men's sprint. This, the first match. Hill versus Pap. This being the write off for the bronze medals. For all the problems we had in the earlier rounds when Hill and Nostein had to go via the complaints procedure to the jury, Kummer says this man, Kappa, who got beaten in two straight rides by Russo, must be the more relaxed of the two, Russ. Yeah. Kappa, do you think he's. Uh, got the advantage or will Hill be steaming you know hey Hill will be steaming after after losing it out to uh, Martin Einstein but uh, as I said before I mean Kappa's a surprise I mean as I said before he's you know he's done well on the tandem he's done well as a junior but the last few years as, as in the senior ranks he hasn't really progressed this far and uh, to you know to go for a bronze medal it's, it's an excellent ride maybe England's his lucky country and so as I say that the Italians on the front Kappa there's big Aaron Hill well if he on that uh, species of crocodiles there in the north of Australia go snapping his teeth and trying the legs off this Italian because he must be absolutely steaming hill. So he's trying to pick up now. So Kappa the Italian's on the front, he's starting to look at him. Hill's starting to pick it up, he's diving in now. We've got two to go, but they're both on a fight for the front. That's how it's won it looks like. Looks like Hill's coming down on the Italian. The Italian backs off. Got to rethink his strategy now, the Italians. 240-pound Aussie starting to pick it up. That's it down the home straight. Hill's looking under his, under his shoulders there. There's some big old shoulders he's got. He's starting to pick it up. Here comes Darren, the world champion. He's on the red line. Come at him. Here comes Hill. And at the moment, Kepp has got it all to do. Hill steaming with that. Uh, we're getting through it. The final for the gold and silver. Win the first of the ride-offs for the bronze medal in convincing style. He won't really be happy, I think, with a bronze medal, but he had something to show for his efforts here in Manchester and that disappointment which he had when he had not been. had to rerun the second of the Rados in semi final because Hill was convinced he crossed the line in first place twice and now he's going to show he is grand champion. At least he's on his way to a bronze medal, providing he can win the second of the matches. So back to slow motion again. We're going down the back straight, a lap and a half to go. They both fought for the front. Hill's got the front. Now he starts to pick it up. Looks a little look up the arms there. Down the home straight, remember. 250 metres to go. There we go. Cross the line. On the last lap. Hill's got the front where he wants. He's looking, he's looking, he's looking. The Italian's got to run at him. The Italian's starting to come. Hill gets out of the saddle, accelerates up to 38 miles an hour. Sits down, tucks down. Really turns it on there. Little look again. The Italian's coming. We're not coming fast enough, right? Hey, that's right. <laughs> hey, a bit faster, a bit faster than you and I, though, eh? During the interval, I had a little chat to, to Craig McLean's father, and I said, "How the hell do you get a ladder's down from Avimore to start riding on the track?" And in fact, I didn't know, but uh, young, young Craig McLean was a, a BMX rider some years ago. He started. His father built one of the the, the, uh, the track, I suppose, the furthest north they are in Scotland. He was a great BMX in his day then he stopped BMX riding and swanned around and did the usual thing that kids do and then his father would be an ex uh, rider as well he used to be a grass track rider his father started riding again and this young lad came out with an older lad by then and uh, got interested uh, back into cycling and it just occurred to me how many good sprinters that came through BMX uh, it's a BMX rider we've just seen him now this, this right. Australian Hill was a BMX rider the British Cycling Federation them ignored BMX in the old days, whereas people like the Dutch Federation put their wings, the Americans looked at it as well, and a lot of the mountain bike riders in America have come through the BMX ranks, and I'm a bit biased in this because you know, my company Halfords built the first BMX track in Great Britain, but it was ignored. So many of the established people with the blue blazers, the clipboards, didn't want to know. And in fact, I went down to the World uh, uh, Cup round in Peterborough just a few weeks ago, and there were some certain gentlemen who have been to their first ever BMX race. It's been going over 16 years. I ask you. Right, you. Sorry, <laughs> Russell, back to you. Hey, that's the power of the Blue Blazers for you. So here we go. We're going for a gold medal here. This is it. The best of three rides.
We could say there's a lucky man there at the back. Good picture there, that's Martin Oyster. That's the problems in the semi final with Darren Hill. And before that with Burren, because Bath really got just the three rounds there because young Burren was all over the place, wasn't he? So maybe he lucks up, maybe this, this, this is the year, you know, he's going to win the world title. But the Frenchman, the 22 year old, on bombshells, going to try to stop it. So Russo on the front from France. He knows that Marty Neustein likes to ride from the front. So Russo, Russo the Frenchman, starts to pick it up. They're going down the back straight. He's got to look, he's got to keep his eyes on him. Marty doesn't want to make a mistake. He's got to get over him. So Russo starts to pick it up now. He's still looking. He's to American wants it. He's got to come for it. Russo, the Frenchman's on the front. He's really turning it on now, 40 miles an hour. He's looking impressive. He's looking really good. The American's starting to struggle to get over him. Looks like Russo, the Frenchman's got it down the home train. This is looking good. Oh, yeah. That was just so easy. No struggle at all for the Frenchman. He was playing there. He was playing. Look at that. 10.79, 66 kilometers an hour. And look, he sits up all fresh and says, yeah, I'm going to do that again. Let's watch the slow motion again. So cool then for foreign Russo. And we see him down the track centre, the French crowd here it's amazing here not amazing i'm glad to see that we got so many people over here from uh, holland germany france et al to watch these uh, championships in manchester and they're watching a frenchman in full flight here using his speed which he's used to great extent to take the uh, kilometer championship of the world the man who's a great kilometer champion taking the gold medal at atlanta a few weeks ago showing his sheer speed here and nostan who normally likes to use his speed to go to the front, close down but he just couldn't Catch this man, Rousseau, who's uh, broken the record, uh, the French record, over 200 metres as well, and he's also a kilometre record breaker, so he just had nothing to offer here, uh, Nostin, and I wonder if, in fact, he's got to think on the second round, Russell, when he had to be more tactical, because it looks to me like he hasn't quite got the speed. Yeah, I think, what obviously, what Marty's got to do is he's got to look at this and say, look, I've got to ride it from the front. 22, I was very impressed. In fact, there are a lot of top pro teams wanting him um, for them. Also, Charlie Vegale has benefited from that uh, fund. So good luck to Phil and all who will support him. Limbs has joined me here. He's suddenly become very excited. I know he likes all track racing. When it comes to sprinting, you, you saw a light comes into his eyes and he gets here all excited. Oh, wow. Uh, 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 Russ, what's going to happen now? Hmm? Well, I'm getting all excited. The reason is because around us there's, 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 there's chaos going on. The reason is uh, the, uh, the, the Stuart Channel are actually used, are, you know, they're live and they're using some sort of flashlights, and the flashlights are actually affecting the photo finish. And, uh, oh, is that why we, yeah. we, we're surrounded by people? I thought they wanted your autograph. No, no. So the, uh, the French, French lights are affecting the uh, photo finish, so the, uh, the officials from the UCI have come, and also some, um, some other officials. And... Um, they're telling the French to turn the lights off, and the French are saying, "No, no, you're. Um, you've got to, you know, we want to keep the lights on, and it's all. Uh, it's there's all, all sorts of trouble going on. Anyway, let's get back to the keep action. Keep your head down. So, oh, well done. Don't let it, it's nothing to do with us. Let's get back to the. Whatever you do, don't pretend you can speak French either. I think it's we're part of it. Let's get back to the live action. Yes, yes, we have a problem here with the lights. Well, we'll do the best we can to take you through the next the sprints between uh, uh, Kippa and Hill. This is uh, Darren Hill lined up here, disappointingly riding off at the moment. Uh, against uh, Hill for the bronze, uh, against Hill and Kipper for, for the bronze medal. Hill already has the first of the heats, and uh, Kipper has to do something unusual here. Kipper's gone a lot further in his competition than some of us thought. The one-time junior sprint champion certainly came through with a, a good show of power throughout the series so far. That's the fellow on, on your screen now, and Darren Hill down the bottom of the screen. If he gets this one, he can go into the bronze medal and that's it so what's Kiefer going to do so here we go Darren Hill's 1-0 up he's on the front he's Australian he's been world champion before Kappa the Italians got to come back at him the previous round he rode on the wheel I think the way to ride is possibly to to ride it from the front but Hill's not going to let him sit so starting to put the power on his hill he's looking under his arms Kappa's trying to come at him he's got him in just in the right position he wants it looks like all the way from the front so Darren Hill the front ex-world champion picks it up 250 minutes to go but it's glued right on his wheel here. Hill's looking again. He's not committing himself. Now he's committing himself down the back straight. He's looking under his arm, but Kappa's right there. And can Kappa come through and grab the series? He's got a long way to go, but he hasn't got the strength he's left. So that's it. In case you're on your way. So Hill 
was disappointed in the ride not staying when he had to go to the third round when he crossed the line in first place trying thought he should have gone into the final for the ride for the gold and silver but the judges decided otherwise and that's shown here I am on the bronze medal and that goes with the uh, gold medal he got in Bogota in 95 the silver medal he got in 1994 now he's got at uh, the senior printing level to so go back to the slow motion again as we see Darren Hill's looking and looking. This is for the bronze medal. Starts to pick it up. They cross the line form there. One lap to go. 250 meters. He's still looking. He's riding on the red line. A sprinter line, we call it. Looks over the right shoulder. Sees Kappa still there. Now he starts to pick it up. Power saddle. He's looking. He's looking. He's looking. Now the Italian makes it. He's realized he's got to get over him. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. But he's just out of the power. He's still trying to get it. But as he comes to the home straight, he goes, oh, no, 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 no. Here, give it to the guy. And there we go. Bronze medal for Australia. Fourth place for the Italians. Well, there we are then. Hill with a hat full of medals. He's had a silver and a gold before. Silver in 94, gold in 95. He's gone back down the scale to a bronze now. Uh, here in 96 at the Velodrome in Manchester. So let's see who's going to get the gold medal at the moment. The roof on the left-hand side has the first of the matches. And Nostra on the right-hand side. Square the series by winning this one. Russell saying we've got uh, lights going full blast behind beside us. Up on the side. You see a big glow up there, that's where we are. And uh, in fact, uh, Boulanger has joined our France Tour France Trois commentators to take them through this one. The world champion, Olympic champion, now watching Russo to see if the French can get yet another gold medal. All okay. crafty stuff here, Russ. We're going for gold here. So straight away, Russo's taking it from the front of Marty, trying to get back on him, but I think he's going to have trouble here. Russo looks so impressive the whole time. So Russo right in the middle of the track. He's trying to slow the track down. He's trying. They're starting to pick it up. Russo's going over 30 miles now down the back straight here. The Americans coming in, but Russo's in front. So the Frenchman, 22 years of age, three times world champion. They hit the line with a lap to go, 250 minutes to go. If he can stay clear for 250 minutes, he's going to win the world title in the sprint. This is sheer speed as Russo, the kilometre champion, really powers down here. Not your usual and shoving and switching. That is sheer power. He's just done that final 200 metres in 10.820 seconds. That's 41.343 miles an hour. 66.543 kilometres per hour. Imagine that here in Manchester on a bike going at nearly 41 and a half miles an hour. No wonder Martin Nostein had great difficulty in going around this superb specialist in sprinting. Russo may not have the track to, to switch and duck and dive like we've seen from some of the riders, but he has the sheer speed, and that has certainly paid off as when he went to front. There was no way that uh, Nostein here could come round him. He had to go over the top, and of course, the long way round over the top adds the yardage uh, to your effort. It is said that two equal riders in the finishing straight, provided you get towed to the last lap, the man can come past, it's worth one length. But in this case, although Marty looked over his shoulder, he left it too late to come through. He hadn't got the power. Russo thundered across the line. Chapeau to the Frenchman. That really has added to the French Hall of Medals here. And I'm sure the president will be very pleased when they get home. Flying Russo in two straight rides, taking the gold medal ahead of Martin Osteen and Hill taking the bronze. And this, I think, repays all the work the French Federation have put in over the year to bring on all their young talent, whether it's sprinting or pursuiting, and certainly it bodes well for the future for the, uh, the sprinters out of France. And I just hope one day we'll start to catch up with him. And I'm sure down there in the track centre, uh, yes, there he is. I thought he'd be there. Morillon would come forward and uh, uh, issue his thanks to as well because Morillon, a great amateur champion over the years, has spent a lot of time putting his expertise back into the sport. That's what we need in Great Britain. I could never understand why people like uh, Reg Harris uh, on, in the track, uh, Barry Hoban on the road, uh, uh, if, uh, Hugh Porter on the track didn't get more involved in the sport. Somehow some, we, we seem to ignore our, our top champion. I don't know what the structure is. Well, we a, a commercial break now, so we never ask that question, but I often wonder what happens to our talented riders while they pass on the information like we've seen here today at Manchester.